Hi all, this is Prakash Vastava and Edupita on Unacademy. Follow me on Unacademy Learning App where you find my many more courses. And in this lesson, let's study about combined footing, which can be of two types, or a rectangular combined footing or a trapezoidal combined footing. And we'll see uh, the designing of a rectangular combined footing here with the help of an example. A combined footing supports two columns. It is provided when two individual footings overlap or it may be the case that the foundation is built close to an existing building where there is not sufficient spaces for equal projection on the size of your exterior columns. And depending upon the availability of the space, uh, combound, combined footing can be a rectangular combined footing or it can be a trapezoidal combined footing. The footing is proportioned in such a way that the center of gravity of the footing lies on the line of action of the resultant of the column loads. Now let's see the step by step procedure for designing a rectangular combined footing. The steps to be followed for designing a rectangular combined footing are like this. Let me tell you that the aim is to select length and width of the footing such that the centroid of the footing and the resultant of the column loads coincides. Suppose this is your rectangular footing in plan and there are two columns of different sizes which this footing is going to support. This is the elevation view where you can see these two columns and this is the footing in elevation. A load Q1 is acting on the first column and load Q2 is actually acting upon the second column. So, first of all, we will try to find out the total load that may be acting on the footing. So, total load is actually Q and this is nothing but the sum of Q1 and Q2. Now, we will try to find out the uh, base of the footing. Base of the footing, how it can be mm, decided? Because uh, we should uh, already beforehand, we should know the net allowable bearing capacity of the soil. That means Q and A is known on which the foundation is resting. From there, you can get the value of area. Area is actually equal to the area of footing needed must be equal to the total load Q upon Q and A net allowable bearing capacity of the foundation soil. Now the area is known. Now our job is to find out the line of action of this force Q. That means we need to find out this X bar. It is actually unknown. And how we are going to do this? Take moment about one column. What you will see? Moment is actually equal to force multiplied by distance. So, this Q must be acting at a distance to balance the total load coming over your footing. That means, I am taking moment about this uh, column Q1. So, what you get? Q multiplied by X bar should be equal to Q2. Q2 multiplied by the center to center distance between these two columns. That is your X2. So, X bar multiplied by Q should be equal to X2 into Q2. From here, you can easily get the value of X bar. X bar is equal to X2 multiplied by Q2 upon Q. Now, next step, 
now we can easily determine the total length of the footing. How? Total length is actually equal to 2 times x bar plus p by b1 by 2. Let's see. x bar plus what is b1? I have taken b1 as the dimension of this uh, column. So, b1 by 2 actually covers this area, this uh, length b1 by 2 plus x bar is going to give you what we need to find out the total length of your footing. 2 times x bar plus b1 by 2 should be the length of your footing. Once length you have found out, you can easily find the width of the footing. How come? Uh, the width B is actually equal to area divided by total length. Being a rectangular footing, area is equal to B cross L. So, you can easily have B is equal to A upon L. Now, the let us find out the actual pressure acting. Actual pressure acting is actually Q, Q naught, which is actually equal to capital Q upon A naught. Now, what is A naught here? Let me tell you, A was the area which we have already found out, but here I am dividing it by A naught. Why? Because while finding out the dimension of B and L, it may be possible that we have done some rounding off of the length and width. And for that, the actual dimension actually changes. So, we are going to find out the total pressure that may be acting. This is the actual pressure that will be actually acting on the foundation. Q upon A naught. A naught is simply B cross L with rounded off values. That is the only difference. Once you find out all this, you are in a position to draw the shear force diagram and bending moment diagram with the pressure that we have obtained Q0 with the new pressure draw SFD and VMD shear force diagram and bending moment diagram and then try to determine the bending moment at the face of the columns and the maximum bending moment at the point of zero shear. Next step is to find the thickness of footing for maximum bending moment and accordingly you need to determine the longitudinal reinforcement for maximum bending moment. Now let's try to see how we are going to approach a problem by taking a real example. So I have taken a problem and it says that you need to design a rectangular combined footing for the columns as shown in the figure and what is given allowable soil pressure is given to be equal to 100 kilonewton per meter square and a footing is actually shown to you. This is your footing in elevation. These are the two columns. First one is carrying a load of 600 kilonewton. And the second column is actually carrying a load of 900 kilonewton. And what more is given? Uh, the distance between column is known 5 meter. And now you need to design this column. Allowable bearing pressure is also given. So first step, you know, you need to find out the total load Q. Q is nothing but the sum of these two. It's very easy. Just try to keep practicing and uh, try to solve this on your own. I have written all the steps. The steps are so simplified. You can see I have solved this problem in just four or five lines. So it's actually easy to solve. We can easily find Q, sum of these two. Next, our job is to find out the value of the point of action of this X bar. 
how we are going to do it take moment about this point what you will get q cross 3 should be equal to q2 cross 5 from there you can get x bar is actually equal to 900 cross 5 900 into distance is 5 divided by total q is that is 1500 and you can easily get the value of x bar to be equal to 3 meter by knowing x bar and uh, q we can find out the area of the footing the area is nothing but 1500 divided by the allowable pressure from here the area that is actually needed is uh, comes out to be 15 meter square now our main focus is to find out the length and the width length is actually nothing but we have found out that l is equal to 2 times x bar plus b by 2 b by 2 because uh, we have taken the line of action of q1 from the center of the column so this small distance b by 2 is actually left which i am going to add because total length must start from the end point and not from the center line so l is equal to 2 times x bar plus b1 by 2 put the values x bar is known 3 b1 is known because your Mm, this uh, size of the column is known to you this is 3 meter cross 3 meter so the half of that comes out to be 0 0.15 put it here 2 3 plus 0 0.15 coming out to be 6.3 meter once length is known try to find out the value of b b is equal to area divided by l very simple Tr just try to solve it you will see that uh, the, the, the problem that actually comes from this part is not that difficult. The area is known 15 divided by length 6.3. You will get the length of B. This is what I was actually saying that we need to round off the total width and total length at times. The total width is coming out to be 2.38 approximately equal to 2.4 meter. So, the new pressure that may be acting is Q upon A. A, we are going to A naught, we are going to take this A naught by from this new width and new length. So, what we get Q naught is equal to 1500 upon 6.3 multiplied by 2.4 and it comes out to be 99.2 kilonewton per meter square this is your actual pressure and with this actual pressure this is your pressure diagram that actually i have drawn here and the total pressure that may be acting multiply this with the overall length you'll get the total pressure per meter run that means 238.1 kilonewton per meter square i am multiplying it by total to width that we have found out to get the length per load pressure per meter this is your pressure diagram and it is actually uniform overall uh, throughout the foundation with this pressure diagram i hope you have learned to draw a shear force diagram and a bending moment diagram Try to draw the shear force and bending moment diagram with this and with the we'll get the maximum bending moment and based on that we will decide the total reinforcements that may be needed and you need to check for shear failures and all that. Try to solve it and have a nice day.